Hello, my name is Richard Bertinet, and I'm back in the Gosney kitchen, where today I'm going to show you how to make my beautiful soft velvety olive oil dough. And with that also, we make some um, beautiful rolls, made with confit tomato, confit garlic, and some beautiful pesto. So you're in for a treat. So let's make the dough now. I got my water. I put my yeast in my flour. Pull on top and start the mixer. So you're on slow speed first. When all the water and the flour have mixed properly, then we add the oil in there. So I'm going to add my oil now. So all the oil is well absorbed now. I'm going to put the speed a bit faster and we'll add the salt in about four or five minutes. Okay, it's time to add the salt now. And two or three more minutes of uh, mixing and be done. If you listen carefully, can you hear what we call in French claquage? Claquage is when you've got the air pocket to get burst inside the dough. So you, got, you know the dough is nice and strong and light. Okay, nice and strong, beautiful dough. That's done. Go now. Unleash the beast. So you can't put the dough like this to rest, you need to give it a, some shape, what I call the top and bottom of your dough. So I'm just going to shape it a little bit. And very quickly you can see how this nice skin form, and you can see the air pocket now. It looks probably different dough already. It doesn't stick. That beautiful texture. And look at the air pocket inside. You can see the dough is alive already. Beautiful. I'm going to separate the dough in half. For that, I'll just give it a quick coating of olive oil. Tuck it in underneath. It's velvety now. Beautiful. So we cut this in half. Tuck that sticky side inside. In the bowl. Same for this. That's good to rest now. So we can rest it for an hour, two hours, three hours, even better overnight if you want to. The longer you leave it, the more flavor will develop. It's not about specific times, but you decide when you want to use it. It's a great dough to use for so many different types of bread, from focaccia to flatbread to pizza. Uh, very versatile, so hope you have fun with it. Here we go. So I'm going to show you what it looks like. The same dough we just made, and what's happened after a few hours. You can see how much more volume we've got now. But look, at, look at how lively that is. It's going to be amazing. So while the dough is resting, I'm going to keep myself busy. I'm going to do some confit tomato, some garlic, and some pesto also. So I've got my apron on because I know me with tomatoes and pesto is going to be everywhere. So there's some nice tomato on the vine in here. I'm going to keep this. This is full of flavor also. What we'll do with the tomatoes, squatter them. Like so. And just take the excess liquid out, just out, and put them in the dish. Don't worry about the pips. That's absolutely fine. Free in there. Here we go. Good pinch of salt. Have the Provence. You can put some rosemary and thyme if you want to. A bit of pepper and then some olive oil in there. I'm going to put this on the side of the dome. There's a little mantle there, a nice piece of kit. So they can stay there. So I'm going to show you the garlic now. Okay, for my confit of garlic, it's very simple. You take a whole of garlic, squash it like this, and just take the whole club like that. In a dish, I put a bit of um, bay leaf, but you can put some rosemary, some thyme, whatever you want. And again, that's going to be put with, in olive oil. And you can make a big jar of this, and then make a beautiful paste, or just use it as a whole. You can make garlic bread with this, you can make all sorts of things. So again, I put this on the deck. So we made our tomatoes, and our garlic, just popping nicely over there. I can hear them cooking away, it's very nice. You can make some um, very simple pesto. So I don't have a blender, so I'm going to use my hands, so it might take a while. So I've got some garlic in here. There's one thing I do with my garlic, especially if I use it raw, is to take these bits off in here. It's a good habit to take. This is really the part of the garlic which is not very digestible. So try to get the habit to take it off. So open your garlic up, check inside, and that bit in here, the germ, try to remove it. And we'll add our pine nuts, so a bit first. Let's add in some basil leaves. 
rest of cheese. I'm going to add some olive oil now, a bit at a time. The smell is fantastic, really, really nice. So, another thing I do sometimes is if I make a lot of pesto and squirt a lot, I can put a bit of lemon juice and freeze some. Lemon juice will stop from oxidizing. It's a good trick to keep it a bit longer. A pinch of salt, to try. Perfect. So our pesto is ready, our tomato and garlic squeaking away. It's nearly time to put everything together. Okay, so our pesto is ready. Our tomato have cooled down now, and they smell absolutely divine. The garlic, again, we leave it cool down. It's well caramelized. So the longer you leave it poaching in your olive oil, the darker it will become inside. So get a little knife and pierce through it. But you can see now, if you just have to take the skin off, you've got a beautiful garlic clove. And like I said, this can become a paste. You can use it whole, add in butter, in mayonnaise, all sorts of things. All ready now, let's have a bit of fun. So look at this. <laughs> I love bubbles. Never bored of this. Look at this. Beautiful. So I use a bit of semola on my table. And with my scraper, I'm just going to turn the dough out. Look at the structure of that dough there. How beautiful that is. Tip the dough over. Gorgeous. A bit of flour on the top. Make a big rectangle. Just with your hand. You don't need a rolling pin or anything like that. That's fine. Then we start with the pesto first. Be generous with it. A lot of pesto. It's straight all over. I love the color already. Right to the edge. Then more flavor. We're going to add the tomatoes now. Sprinkle your tomatoes all over. Look at those colors. So you can do this with cherry tomatoes also. But what you want is colors. Really flamboyant. And our garlic. So how much garlic you put in there, that's up to you. If you're on a date tonight, don't put too much. <laughs> oh, smell divine. Okay, so now keep it square, and then we're gonna roll it. A bit like a Swiss roll. So start from one side, roll it over itself. Make sure you trap a lot of filling on the first layer. Start again from this side, and again, start again. Make sure you keep it nice and square right to the end. It's hoozing of goodness. So what makes this little rolls interesting is we're going to bake them in little tins and then put a bit of graceful pepper in there. So that will keep all the juice, all the oil into the bread. So let's start with this. So we cut them, get a nice sharp knife and clean cut and lift them up, cut side up and place them on the middle. Lift. So when they cut, we need to let them prove now. About 45 minutes, depending on how warm your kitchen is. 45 minutes should do, and then we're gonna bake them in the dome. Okay, so my first batch are ready to go in the oven. So we put this in the dome with no flame. If you got flame, it's gonna burn the paper. So I got about 300 degrees to start with there, and then we put the dough on the front. So I bake this with the dough on, so there's no flame. So we can just keep the heat in the oven. I will have a look halfway through, of course, for the color and swap the tray around, keep moving it around. So we get even heat all over the tray. Listen to this. Listen to that noise. Beautiful. So you can see with the paper, you can just check. Nice and soft underneath. So I've kept some of my oil from the garlic or the tomato. And when they come out of the oven, I just give it a bit just do a bit of a wash on top. Okay, best time of the day, eating. <laughs> so they cool down now. You can see how beautiful they are, and each one of them are all slightly different, which I love about this as well. They're great for barbecue, they're great for eating, just dipping in pasta or anything like that. If you look, they're just full of flavor inside. You get all that pesto and tomatoes, and absolutely beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. But that's one way of eating it. The other way is when they cool down enough, you can take one of them and then cut it. You can see inside. Look at this. Beautiful texture. See all the flavor there inside. In more olive oil, a few leaves. 
You put tomatoes, you can put whatever you want, some beautiful ham. Fresh basil works well. A bit of cheese. Pepper. And this on top. Look at this, how beautiful. Good enough to eat. So I'm a designated chief tester. Mm. Mm -mm -mm. Filthy in the most beautiful way. So delicious. So of course you can find all the recipes, the how-to on ghostnet.com. You can see all my recipes in there. A bientôt.